This is the whole story. I mean, this is the story that the Picton File was a, a, a memoir of what it was like to work on this story all those years. And I did it in 2007. I didn't think it was going to last till 2010. Uh, and the, it was also a guide to the case. Who were the players? Who's the defense team? Who's the prosecutors? Who's the judge? Who are all these people? This one is, uh, is basically the story from the beginning to the end, the whole story. Everything I knew and heard that I thought was interesting. Again, if I thought the reader would find it interesting, I put it in. Willie actually likes women. Willie Picton always had women that he liked to hang out with. He didn't sleep with them, and he certainly didn't kill them. He he likes in the company of women. And then, but the the sexual psychopath side of him is completely different. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, he had a baby shower for his friend Gina Houston. She was expecting. He would love to have married Gina Houston. Uh, she was a prostitute and drug addict from the downtown east side. But he loved her. He just was crazy about her in, in a very affectionate way. The police had some problems. They didn't have any bodies. And police do not like doing murder investigations when there's no body, or missing people investigations if there's no body. They like to call the women transient. Well, they weren't transient. They lived, most of them lived in the downtown east side, and they lived there for years. They actually didn't have the money to go anywhere else. You know, they weren't transient, so they were drifting from city to city. Or, uh, that wasn't their lifestyle. They found a place to live in the downtown east side, and they stayed there till they died. And yet, when friends would come out to British Columbia, I'd take them to the downtown east side. You know, it's right in the heart of the action down there, and it's fascinating. My friends would be scared to death at first, and then they'd start to relax, and they'd say, well, this is kind of normal, and I'd say, yes, it is. It's, uh, I've never been threatened by anybody in the downtown east side. I've never felt, except after the first day or two, I'm really uncomfortable. I'm careful. I don't go there at two in the morning, but I like it. It's a community. But they weren't high-profile victims. You know, like a, a child that had been taken or murdered, or a, they paid more attention and spent more money on people who'd had garage fires in their in their laneways. And there was a hundred thousand dollar reward for the leaving, you know, for anyone who could help them find the guy that was torching garages and and destroying cars and so on in laneways. And the, nothing for the missing women. It was painful to listen to the family's stories, and it was painful, and the most painful part of that was listening to their feeling, to, they talk about their guilt and their regrets and their remorse, you know. And it was painful to sit in court and hear what happened to them. But again, it was interesting. I have to say it was interesting. I mean, we were just, you know, the coffee ladies would creep in from their stand out in the, in the, uh, outside the courtroom door and to listen, to hear what happened, you know, it was, we couldn't believe it. We were just in shock. The only time when I really felt a sense of grief was at the end of the trial, when the v jury came up with a second-degree murder verdict, which was unbelievable to all of us, and when the jury foreman stood there and wept, and he was obviously so upset, and most of the jury wept, they were upset at giving her a second degree murder, and there was, I think, a holdout on the jury who wouldn't go for first degree. And they'd been locked up for nearly two weeks. You know, it was getting towards Christmas. They'd been together for a year. It was awful. And the families, some of the families, gave a victim impact statements. And everybody cried. And then the prosecutor, the chief prosecutor, Mike Petrie, who was a wonderful, wonderful guy, he read the victim impact statement of a family who couldn't be there, and he, or else I think they couldn't do it. They just couldn't do it. And he broke down, and he wept while he delivered that. And everybody walked out of there in tears. And I think that's the only time I remember just falling apart. These girls didn't come from nowhere, and they have families, and the families are, are loving and interesting and some of them came from terrible families, but then they would have friends and, and relatives who did love them. So, you know, in a way, I, I uh, never expected this book to be as interesting or as, as in, totally engrossing as it became, but it is. Never for a second 
Did I regret it? Never for a second was I bored. You know, I enjoyed it more than anything I've ever done.